Imagine standing 625 meters above the ground. That's almost twice the height of the Eiffel Tower, with nothing beneath your feet but air, clouds drifting by, and a river so far below, it looks like a thin blue thread winding through the canyon. Now, imagine driving across this expanse, literally traveling through the clouds, on a bridge suspended higher than the tip of the Empire State Building. This is the Hujong Canyon Bridge in China, and it's about to become the world's highest bridge ever built. But to understand why this is huge, we first need to understand where it's being built. Welcome to Guizhou, a mountainous province in southwestern China that for centuries remained a mystery to the outside world. If you look at Guizhou on a map, it seems small enough, about the size of Missouri. But don't let that fool you. This province is almost entirely covered by mountains, canyons, and karst formations that make traveling even short distances an exhausting ordeal. Picture a place so rugged, so dramatically vertical, that for centuries people believed it was actually cursed. Welcome to Guizhou province in southwestern China, a place the ancient Chinese literally called the land of demons. What makes Guizhou so formidable? One word, karst. If you're not familiar with karst landscapes, imagine taking a chunk of limestone, letting water dissolve it for a few million years, and ending up with a topography that looks like it was designed by a geological madman. Towering stone pillars, massive sinkholes, underground rivers, and caves large enough to house entire ecosystems. About 92% of Guizhou is mountainous. It's as if nature decided flatland was overrated and went all in on verticality. There's an old saying that in Guizhou, there are no three days without rain, no three fields without a mountain, and no three coins in anyone's pocket. It's a poetic way of saying this place is wet, mountainous, and historically poor. For centuries, this extreme landscape kept Guizhou isolated. Villages just a few miles apart might as well have been on different continents. A journey that would take 20 minutes on flat land could take days in Guizhou. Navigating narrow paths along cliff edges or crossing handmade rope bridges that swayed precariously in the wind. In fact, the Chinese government didn't successfully build a proper road into many parts of Guizhou until the 1970s. There's a story, perhaps embellished over time, about what happened shortly after one of these roads opened. A group of government officials visited a village that had just been connected to the outside world for the first time. When they arrived, they discovered that there was no accommodation for tourists, and few people spoke standard Chinese. The village leader welcomed these strange visitors into his home, following local tradition. But while they were inside, a group of local women who had never seen cars before mistook the officials 4x4s for strange new animals and tried to feed them by stuffing straw into the engines. Whether that story is entirely true or not, it shows just how remote and disconnected Guizhou remained well into the modern era. Villages were isolated not just from the outside world, but from each other. A journey that might take minutes in flat terrain could take hours or even days in Guizhou. Navigating narrow paths that hugged cliff edges or crossing rickety rope bridges dating back to the 19th century. And that's not even all. The region's extreme weather added another layer of difficulty. Rain could set in for weeks at a time, triggering landslides and making already treacherous paths even more dangerous. During these periods, entire communities could be cut off completely. But in 1989, everything began to change. The Chinese government embarked on an aggressive road-building campaign that would eventually transform not just Guizhou, but the entire country. Since making that decision, China's embarked on what can only be described as the most ambitious infrastructure campaign in human history. By 2020, China had built over 160,000 kilometers of highways, a network longer than America's interstate system. And nowhere is this transformation more dramatic than in Guizhou. The government's philosophy was simple. Transport infrastructure is fundamental to economic growth. If they wanted to develop China's poorer regions, they needed to connect them to the rest of the country with reliable roads. And in true Chinese fashion, nothing would stand in the way of this vision, not even the seemingly impenetrable mountains of Guizhou. Today, towns and cities across Guizhou are connected by an extensive road network, with some expressways allowing up to six lanes of traffic and the backbone of this network? Bridges. Lots and lots of bridges. Guizhou now has more high bridges over 100 meters tall than the rest of the world combined. Yes, one single province in China has more super high bridges than all other countries on Earth put together. 
To put that into context, Guizhou has over 250 high bridges. Italy, which ranks second globally in high bridge count, has just 60 in total as an entire country. Three of the highest bridges in the world, including those under construction, are in Guizhou. And what's even more remarkable is that all three of them cross the same river, the Baipan River. The Baipan River flows through deep canyons for hundreds of kilometers before merging with the Nanpan River to form the Hongshui River. These deep gorges have presented enormous challenges for transportation, but they've also created the perfect testing ground for China's bridge-building expertise. No river in the world has as many record-breaking bridges as the Baipan. Connecting Guizhou with the rest of China meant mastering this river and its immense canyons, and that's exactly what Chinese engineers have been doing for the past three decades. The results speak for themselves. The road network built over the last 30 years has opened Guizhou to the rest of the world. It's now a popular tourist destination thanks to its stunning scenery, and it's quickly becoming a national hub for big data infrastructure. Ironically, the same karst landscape that once made construction so difficult in Guizhou is now exactly what's attracting investment. The deep gorges and cool winds are being used to funnel cold air onto the huge servers that make up big data centers preventing them from overheating without the need for expensive cooling equipment. Add to that Guizhou's abundant rivers, which make it ideal for hydropower facilities, and you can see why companies like Apple, Huawei, and Tencent are all building regional data centers there. They're tapping into the province's natural resources, and Guizhou's economy is improving year after year as a result. With economic growth comes the need for even more transportation links to meet the influx of investment in tourists. And that's where the Hujong Bridge comes in. A bridge so ambitious, so extreme in its scale and design, that it pushes the boundaries of bridge engineering. In a remote part of China, over 1,800 kilometers from Beijing, the Hujong Bridge has been under construction for the last three years, and it's unlike any bridge ever built before. First, there's the height. At 625 meters above the canyon floor, it'll be the highest bridge ever built, beating the previous record by a full 60 meters. That's like taking the current record holder and stacking a 20-story building on top of it. Then there's the length. The entire bridge stretches nearly 3 kilometers, with a main span of 1,420 meters across the Hujong Grand Canyon. That's 10 meters longer than the Humber Bridge in the UK, which held the title of world's longest suspension bridge for 17 years. But the most impressive thing about the Hujong Bridge isn't measured in meters or kilometers. It's measured in minutes. Before construction began, crossing the canyon meant a bone-jarring 70-minute drive along winding mountain roads that were frequently closed due to landslides or severe weather. With the bridge in place, that journey will take just over a minute. One minute to overcome a challenge that has shaped this region for centuries. But building at such heights comes with extraordinary challenges. The Hujong Canyon is characterized by steep cliffs, fast-flowing currents, and unpredictable weather. One moment, the air is still. And the next, powerful winds are ripping through the gorge. The rocky terrain adds another layer of difficulty. The karst formations of Guizhou are porous and prone to erosion and instability. How do you anchor a massive bridge in rock that's full of cracks and underground water streams? The answer lies in cutting-edge engineering solutions. The Hujong Bridge is supported by two enormous towers, measuring 262 meters on the north side and 205 meters on the south side. They're built right on the mountainside, hundreds of meters above the canyon floor. The foundations for these towers had to be anchored deep into weathered rock layers, using specially designed pile foundations with high-strength, earthquake-resistant steel bars for reinforcement. Without these reinforcements, the bridge wouldn't stand a chance against the region's natural forces. Together with two enormous cables weighing over 9,000 tons each, these towers hold up the bridge the same way two trees hold up a hammock. The suspension design was chosen specifically because it allows the bridge to span the wide canyon without needing support pillars in the middle, which would be practically impossible to build in this terrain. The bridge deck is made of reinforced steel trusses designed to withstand high winds and earthquakes. Almost 49,000 tons of steel are being used in the construction, with the truss segments alone weighing over 21,000 tons. Moving these massive pieces into place required advanced technology too. Engineers developed the world's largest cable train system specifically for this project. The system uses the Beidou Navigation Satellite Network and Internet of Things technology to ensure each segment is positioned with extreme precision. 
and to address the extreme temperature swings between day and night, the engineers installed a solar-powered wind meter to track wind speeds in real time, feeding data to the smart control center. With this system in place, operators could adjust their strategies on the fly, reducing risks and keeping construction on schedule. Despite these constant challenges, the Hujong Canyon Bridge stands as proof of human skill and determination, because they build not just a transport link, but a destination in its own right. Building this bridge in a region as unforgiving as Guzhou is an incredible achievement, and the regional government has decided to turn it into a full-blown tourist attraction. Before tourists even step foot on the bridge, they'll be able to stop at a state-of-the-art visitor center where they can learn about the bridge's construction and the history of the region. There will also be private accommodation on site that overlooks the bridge in the canyon, allowing guests to stay the night and fully appreciate the spectacular setting. To see the canyon from a different angle, visitors will be able to take a glass elevator to the top of the South Tower, 180 meters above the road. There will be a bar and a cafe up there where they can relax and enjoy the breathtaking views. But the real adventure begins underneath the road deck. The elevator will also drop visitors off inside the support trusses themselves. As cars pass overhead, people can explore a walkway that stretches 800 meters out to the middle of the bridge. Along the way, there will be rooms with glass floors and a restaurant. And at the very end of the walkway, at the bridge's highest point, thrill seekers will find the world's highest bungee jump. Visitors will literally be able to jump off the bridge at its highest point and experience the canyon like never before. It's definitely not for the faint-hearted, but for adrenaline junkies, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. What's more, the bridge will strengthen ties between Guiyang and Qingqing, easing the movement of goods and people. Its connection to the G56 Expressway will open trade routes linking businesses across China and Southeast Asia. This infrastructure boost will attract investment, foster industrial growth, and create jobs for a region that was once hindered by poverty. With all these ambitious plans, you might be wondering about the cost. The Chinese government often keeps these details to themselves, and with little interest from Western media, finding a price tag wasn't easy. Some sources suggest the bridge has an estimated cost of around $280 million, while others put it at $150 million. Either way, with construction due to finish on schedule this year, the project may well come in on budget. But for now, keep an eye on Visionary, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when it's all set. Until next time!